Welcome to Queer News Tonight, the world's first and only LGBTQ plus daily evening news. It's time to queer up the news. It is 8 p.m. Tuesday, June 21st, 2022, and we are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. So many of your important stories we're going to tell this evening on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first live daily LGBTQ evening news show, literally out of the closet and into the headlines on Queer News Tonight with Al Ferguson. Thank you for joining Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only unedited LGBTQ plus evening news show. Whatever happens, you will see it. Queer News Tonight is supported by viewers like you. We are part of the partnership between Happening Out Television Network and Hot Spots Magazine. Hot Spots is celebrating 36 years of the LGBTQ plus experience. We bring you the best of LGBTQ plus news, entertainment, and support of our community. I'm your anchor at Queer News Tonight, Glenn Weinsummer. I am not Al Ferguson. He is off. So here I am in his seat, which is rather comfortable because he has definitely broken it in. Oh, but I do. Oh my God. But I will say for those of you who look for him, the inside of my glasses are orange to match Al's. Oh. So let's welcome anchor Greg Shapiro, an inductee into the Chicago LGBT Hall of Fame. Greg is the author of eight books, including his latest, Fear of Muses, an entertainment journalist whose celebrity interviews and music reviews run in a variety of regional LGBTQ plus and mainstream publications and websites. His movie review column called Screensaver can be found in South Florida Gay News, San Francisco's Bay Area Reporter, RottenTomatoes.com, and more. Good evening, my friend, Greg. Good evening, Glenn, and happy National Selfie Day. Selfie day? Is it really? Truly. I love it. I did not know that. Let's Wait. welcome Anchor. Just got to get one quickie in just <laughs> as we're getting started there. All right. Good. We're good. Let's welcome Anchor Christopher Barnhill. Christopher is a native of Washington, D.C., HIV activist and community leader. If there's one thing you must know about him, Brandy Norwood is his queen. Yes. <laughs> welcome, Christopher. Yes. If you know me, Brand, you know what, is definitely everything to me. <laughs> All right. So let's welcome Jeff Oliverio. He is the founding member and treasurer of Hollywood's LGBTQ Plus Council, a unique, com a unique community civic organization designed to unite the LGBTQ Plus community in Greater Hollywood. The council will be hosting the second annual My Hollywood Pride on January 22nd, 2023. He is also the chair for the 2022 National LGBTQ Task Force Gala being held October 22nd in Miami Beach. Good evening, Jeff. Good and Jeff, evening. Just as you're starting, I am so happy that Hollywood Pride is in January because we just finished Fort Lauderdale Wilton Manor's Pride and it, the record said it was 102 degrees on Saturday. Ooh. And so it'll be a pleasure in, in January. We like to call ourselves the first pride in the nation and the most temperate. <laughs> well done. The a coolest. lot of pride. <laughs> the coolest. We are the reporters for Queer News Tonight, and this evening we begin with the queer headlines. The LGBTQ plus community in South Florida and across America is diverse. Our community across the world is vast, and here are the bullet points of the queer news for today, Tuesday, June 21st. And today, if you haven't noticed, is the first day of summer. <laughs> Hence the 102 degrees on Saturday, because <laughs> oh we got to jump God. on it. Yeah. I also want you to know I'm wearing my Smart Right shirt because we just kicked off our our smart right efforts for this November. And so I'm proudly wearing. And we got to see time. this, the funds raised from smart right donated at uh, Stonewall Pride. Yes. Correct. Yes. That's that's very very exciting. Exciting. Yeah. yeah. So it's very, very cool. exciting. Congratulations. But we're excited about that. Thank you. One day I'm going to do that. Well, <laughs> one day could be six months from now. So we'll talk after. <laughs> okay. Ready. Let, all right. So let's clear up the USA view. Is it a national strategy by right wing extremists to ramp up LGBTQ plus attacks during pride month? This month, the LGBTQ plus community saw several attacks on Pride events. There were Christian fascists screaming outside a kids' drag event in Texas, a white nationalist group planning a riot at a Pride in Iowa, a group of Proud Boys disrupting a drag, a drag story hour in San Francisco, and a 24-year-old right-wing right -wing anti-LGBTQ plus gun advocate in Arizona who showed up for a March for Our Lives event with an AR-15. These events all come as high-profile Republican lawmakers are creating an atmosphere of fear and pushing a 
groomer narrative with no evidence to turn people against gay people, even though pedophiles are 11 times more likely to be straight. This story like breaks my heart. This is, there's so much hate and anger. And I know that how this past week we had 55,000 mm -hmm. people estimated at the Pride in Wilton Manors and mm -hmm. security was the biggest issue. Yeah. It was the biggest narrative on the street for weeks leading up to it, that they went from cost. a cost of 40,000 to 125,000. Mm -hmm. And they had um, snipers on roofs all because mm -hmm. these folks are preaching this hate and, you know, and. Well, and they've been emboldened by the she devil of the new SS, uh, Donald Jessica Trump, as Randy Rainbow calls him. Uh, I, I mean, that's they just he's cheering them on. He's the man. He's well, their man. I, I also think, again, these attacks are just a, a great form of distraction. Mm -hmm. um, as we were walking in the Pride Parade, I was uh, walking with Equality Florida mm -hmm. and one of our uh, local LGBTQ candidates, uh, Todd Del May. And as we were chanting, um, we say gay, which was which is a great slogan. Um, I made sure to turn to the crowd and say, we say vote, because if we vote and we get these people out of it's office, we're going to we're going to take down a lot of this hate by going to the polls and coming out to vote. And that's what we need to do. Right. I'm just confused on how they like know where all the pride events, all of the gay action stuff, like it's like, maybe we should just go to them and get all this information. on Grindr. They must be on Grindr. <laughs> you know what, at the next, oh. at the next pride event, let's pull up our Grindr's next to Westboro Church <laughs> and see who's, co who's on. Yep, Except exactly. I don't think incels are on Grindr. Oh. Mm. But I, I will say one, one thing about this weekend that I felt very empowering. There, we have spent the last three years basically being insulated, being yeah. separated yeah. from each other, and in many Sweet. ways forgetting how large our voice is and how strong our community mm -hmm. is. And if we gain nothing from this past weekend, to see 55,000 people in that, I don't know, what is it, a mile? Mm -hmm. Less than a mile, Less than a mile of yeah. packed in yeah. says, I'm not alone, my voice does count, and that if, I'm, if I speak up and we all speak up, we can make a difference. It's such, you know, after the last three years of thinking after a while that we don't matter and that we aren't that big anymore, you seem to forget how strong we are. And the Pride events, and we'll talk about one coming up later, really emphasize that we do have a voice and we do make an economic impact and we should stand up. Absolutely. And the, and the contrast of the people on the parade line, I noticed so many younger yeah, youth in yes, line. Yes. And the story that we just covered, and allies. one thing they had, and yeah. allies. Thank you, mm -hmm. allies. Yes, a lot of allies. But one thing this story has a lot of in common is a lot of these protests were led by older right. white men. And so one of the things is that there's a lot more younger, diverse people yeah. coming up to vote than there are older white men that are protesting at these events. So I think we know that the next generation hopefully is a sign of hope. Absolutely. And now we clear up the USA view. Study shows LGBTQ plus investors have less confidence about retirement than straight cisgender peers. A recent retirement confidence study by the Employee Benefit Research Institute shows that Americans who identify as LGBTQ plus are less likely to have higher assets and more likely to be in debt than their cisgender straight counterparts. More than half of non-LGBTQ investors who earned $75,000 or more had $250,000 held in savings and investments, excluding their primary residence and defined benefit plan assets compared with 39% of LGBTQ workers. Comparatively, two thirds of LGBTQ workers who earned less than $35,000 had less than $1,000 in savings and investments compared with 54% of their straight counterparts earning the same amount. This story makes me, um, you know, frustrated um, as the certified financial planner at right? the table. Right. Um, you know, our community does not speak about this enough, about planning for the future, investing in ourselves. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and again, it comes from a lot of communities, communities of color, community, women who have traditionally not been marketed to and spoken to um, from the investment community, from the banking world. Um, so this is definitely a focus. Um, I know myself personally of talking to friends and, and, yeah. and colleagues about ways we can engage our community and talking about, you know, 
creating financial freedom. I think there's also, there was a, uh, it was a small poll that they took of people. Correct. And also in the article, it talked about the people that they did do the polling with were older. Mm -hmm. And when you looked at it, it was mostly because of health concerns. And if we're looking at an older population of LGBT, especially mm -hmm. in the male, male, I know personally that when I was told I wasn't going to live more than 10 days, I sold my life insurance policy. I bought a Mercedes because what the hell, I'm going to be dead in, you know, in a couple of months. And I think we're seeing this, I don't know that this is truly a reflection of where all LGBT stands or what the future looks like. I think this has, there's a skew in this because of that health issue. Mm -hmm. You know, many of my LGBTQ counterparts work in nonprofit and work in social services. And I'm part of that two thirds of, of, of people. Um, every dollar counts. Mm -hmm. Cost of living is high. Food is high. Oh, no, gas especially. is high. So trying to plan for the future when my present is 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 literally uh, hanging on by each dollar is really challenging, and I think that um, that uh, w with with this is that you know there are a lot of times you might can contribute to your your uh, uh, retirement, but you might have to pull that money right on out. Well, let me ask you, Christopher, how old are you with that, if you don't mind? I'm 35. Okay, so yeah. you're, you're up there. Okay, you're not up there, <laughs> well, no. but I would thought you could but, stay but, a lot you know, younger, when, and I would say, okay, you know, you're just starting out. So you got to give yourself some time to get to that place. And a lot of your peers that are in these nonprofits are, are in many cases younger. Mm -hmm. and so I- Well, I've been in nonprofit since I was 21, right. but even still, I mean, even in that time I was putting pennies in and then mm. I have a, a life event that occurred and then boom, I need to use right. it. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, this, this, this issue is not uncommon to a lot of people across America. Mm -hmm. um, what I think the, um, the main issue, though, is that it is not a focus of our community mm -hmm. as much. Right. And I think that there needs to be more conversation around uh, planning and discussing you know, strategies that, that you know, LGBT speak to our community. Because you look at the commercials on TV and it's, it's, all... it's, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an older, white, you know, straight right. couple in the Fidelity commercial. Right. And it's not, you know, it's not it's you know, a lesbian couple or a, a, you know, a, a trans female. It's, it's, it's but, not but marketed to us. You said couples. And it's couples mm -hmm. a lot of times. So a lot of us are single like me. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you and your husband have a job. Do you think that in your scenario and others that have, have kids may look at it more seriously because there's a dependent that's relying on them, that you've got to put away money for school and less, you know, I'm less um, rural because it's just me? I would say, I mean, I, I, I manage a lot of clients who don't have children mm -hmm. as well. And I mean, and, and planning for your future and for health care and for everything else is just as important as Absolutely. someone who has kids who doesn't. I mean, yes, the leaving of assets to children mm -hmm. might be a, a concern, but it's really planning for the future expenses and being yeah. able to retire and have right. health care when you're when you're older. Right. Those Great. are the challenges. So let's equip some business. All right. Disney pauses moving 2000 jobs from California to Florida over clash with Governor DeSantis, Disney has recently announced that they plan to move over 2,000 jobs from California to a new campus in Central Florida will be delayed. The new facility in Lake Nona was originally set to open in December of this year, but Disney spokeswoman Jackie Waller recently said that the opening date has been pushed back to, to 2026. While Waller said that it was to accommodate construction, State Rep. Anna Escamani claims the decision is based on Disney's battle with Florida's leaders over the Don't Say Gay Bill, saying, quote, these culture wars have an economic, quote, cost, end quote. Um, I agree with this. Uh, it does have a cost. I mean, why come, I mean, why come to a state that doesn't support you? Why, why pay into the economy of Florida, if it doesn't support you, and and yeah, Disney, <laughs> and Disney is is a is a major corporation that brings in a lot of business and revenue to the state, and to push the envelope with Disney is really really hurting our economy mm -hmm. because people come to Florida to go to Disney, Disney of right. course, of course. Yeah. Well, and this as you're talking about voting, you mm -hmm. know, we say vote. This is yet another reason that DeSantis must be dethroned, <gasps> dethroned, as well as his crazy cronies. So again, voting is an important thing. It's interesting that they moved the date to 2026. Uh, I'm wondering what's supposed to happen. Oh, maybe oh, he'll be out of office yeah. by then. <laughs> oh, <for> um, <laughs> but, but the other thing is, is that, you know, again, for corporations, you know, you want to attract and retain the mm -hmm. best people. And if, you, if you're looking at where policies and, you know, and laws favor your 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 employees, and you look at what we have here in Florida. 
we're not being competitive with with a California or a right. New York right. or other places that have policies that support workers and support their lives and their families and how they organize themselves. Yeah. So this is a, a huge economic impact for Florida. I hope voters wake up and yes. and hear this. Definitely. Yeah. It was. Sorry, it was interesting this week. I did an interview with the Boston Globe about how DeSantis, in many ways, is affecting tourism. Mm -hmm. You know, are, are the, is the LGBT community choosing not to come here and protest, or is the LGBT community looking to come here to make a statement? You know, and what does that impact, and what mm -hmm. what's that mean? And when we look at Disney, that's exactly part yeah. of the what's what does this mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, sorry, Greg, go ahead. And now we clear up the worldview. Israel gives work permits to LGBTQ plus Palestinians granted asylum. On Sunday, the Israeli government announced that they will start allowing LGBTQ plus Palestinians fleeing persecution, as well as domestic violence victims, to get work permits. Current laws block those two categories of Palestinians from being able to work legally in Israel. A social worker named Nama Sabato told the Times of Israel, quote, they had no access to work, to health care, to welfare services. And so what we'd see over time is that their situation would deteriorate. These are people who already arrived here traumatized after being attacked and persecuted, end quote. This sounds like a turning over of a new leaf. This is mind-blowing. Really. I was going to say it's a mitzvah. It is a mitzvah. It is, it's true. Many in this community it's, in a very good way. Mitzvah, I don't know what that means. Uh, a good, <laughs> it's a blessing. It's a good, it's a blessing. A blessing. A good okay. act. It's a good act. Well, a yeah, good act. It's doing something for the better world. Okay. Yeah. We'll and do we'll a Yiddish one-on-one -on -one later. <laughs> Thank you. Thank the you. two of us, especially <laughs> Greg and I, can, can do a private course on that. But it is actually a huge, it's huge deal because they're taking away what they hate about each other mm -hmm. and finding something that they that they can support with each other. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to make, and I think that's just fantastic that, and this whole work thing is a big deal because the people sure. were coming across before and were in poverty mm -hmm. because they were, you know, they were homeless and they couldn't get a job, but they were there for safety. So, you know, this, this is a big move. Yeah, and, and work is safety for a lot of people. Yeah. Absolutely. And while it does sound like, a humanitarian act it also sounds like a little bit of a little jab at uh, the Palestinian leaders mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that Israel is doing this it's a little a little zets as they say yeah. in the old world <laughs> yeah. and it's hopefully keeping people from being killed yeah because yeah, we true. know in a lot of these countries where the LGBT community are um, mm. taken advantage of harassed mm. um, and chosen to be the ones that they're going to kill and make an example out of because they're quote unquote not normal. Mm -hmm. Here we go um, with on the Israeli side saying there is nothing wrong, and you can come here because it's safe. Wow, Maybe that, that changes the world. Mm, I don't it know. Does. Mm -hmm. that helps out a lot. All right, let's let's move on. Let's queer up LGBTQ plus civil rights. This is how child protective services are being weaponized <laughs> against LGBTQ plus youth. Wow, this is going to be a good one. Last year, Republican lawmakers were passing laws stopping transgender girls from competing in school sports. While malicious, many people felt it wasn't a big deal. Now we're seeing that the sports laws were just a foot in the door to open the way to even more aggressive attacks on children. States like Texas and our own fabulous Florida have blocked gender-affirming care for transgender youth. And Florida's Ron DeSantis has gone even further by blocking transgender care for Medicaid recipients. Last week, DeSantis also proposed an order to Child Protective Services mm -hmm. to investigate not just the parents of children seeking gender-affirming care, but also to investigate parents who take their children to events with, wait for it, drag queens. Oh, my God. Historically, there have been many fascist mm -hmm. regimes who have attacked their opponents by taking away their children. From the Ottoman Empire, taking Christian children, and Spanish dicta dictator Francisco Franco stealing the babies of leftist opposition to the U.S. government taking children from native tribes and putting them in boarding houses. Mm -hmm. The Nazi party also stole the children of Polish families to Germanize them. Historically, these attacks on children rarely stay with their original targets, leading many to question what demographic Republicans will attack next. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this many in many times. levels yeah. of, you know, it's, they come for you first. Mm -hmm. So they're, ch they're choosing us and then who do they go after next and right. how we each need to take care of each other and, and stand up when, when wrong is being done. Absolutely. I mean, the one of the uh, 
best features we had at, at Hollywood Pride was we had Drag Queen Story Time with our own, very own Misty Eyes. Yes, um, I saw that. That was so beautiful. And <laughs> we had so many great mm -hmm. comments from the families and children that came out. And uh, one of my good friends, her daughter, wanted to write about Misty Eyes as for her uh, Women's uh, Hero oh. Month. Oh, wow. um, right. um, oh. Uh, that also became an issue for her to discuss in schools because the teacher wasn't sure she could discuss that. Right. Um, so uh, again, yeah. thanks to our fabulous governor. Mm. Um, but these these stories and in hearing what DeSantis is doing, it is. If it's not you now, it'll be you next. Right. Right. And right. it's a warning sign to everyone out there. Without a doubt. Right. It's like we keep dangling the children as what about the children? But didn't we just have like so many uh, shootings in schools, and don't we have a, a shortage of formula and stuff? It's like, let's focus on these things. The real, well, it's called shiny thing. There's a shiny thing over here. Spray. Look at this. Not yeah. kids going to a drag show. I mean, <laughs> smoke and mirrors. That's right. And in, and in, they think they're being helpful when in reality it's hurtful. It's right. very, hurtful. very hurtful. And, and it's not a drag show. Education. Right. It's, yeah. it's not a drag show. I mean, what's next? You're going to say, don't go if there are clowns or people right. dressed as gorillas or whatever that might be. I mean, you're not comparing drag queens to that, but they're characters. Yes. Right. And in this role, they're playing the role of a character to entertain right. and to make people aware and open up individual minds. Mm -hmm. right. So let's not take them to Disney then, because aren't <laughs> people in costumes? Right. Right. So it's, it's just, I had a moment with Goofy once, but that's a whole nother story. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's focus on some happiness. Next, we report on our partnership with Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer Ooh. church here in Fort Lauderdale. We are broadcasting for our permanent set here at Sunshine in supporting that partnership. Happening Out Television Network broadcasts the largest LGBTQ plus religious live broadcasts in the world as more than 30,000 watch every Sunday at 1030 a.m. Eastern. Watch this. Reverend Dr. Anne Atwell, Minister of Connections. Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. Okay, we finished tonight's queer news headlines with what we like to call LGBTQ plus flash news. <laughs> LGBTQ plus flash news. The teacher who created the first USA Public School Gay Straight Alliance retires. Watch this. In his classroom at Newton South High School, you'll find Bob Parlin, at least for another week. Retiring after 35 years. I'm uh, really excited, actually. The world history teacher is putting away the lesson plans. Turns out he made some history of his own. It was 1992. Mr. Parlin had just come out as gay to his co-workers and students. One of those students approached him, looking to create a space where straight and gay students could meet and learn from each other. An alliance, if you will. We thought maybe two or three students might join us and we could talk, uh, but 50 students showed up. Turns out it was the first gay straight alliance in a public school in the country. And over the years, it has changed names, now called the Genders and Sexualities Alliance, to be more inclusive. A lot has changed since that first meeting 30 years ago, but Mr. Parlin says this is his legacy and he has a final lesson. I hope people will just listen more to young people, ask them questions about how they're feeling, and, and realize we need to support all of our students and create an environment where everyone feels safe and welcome and included. And I don't think anyone in the country really disagrees with that. 30 years ago, there was not nearly as much acceptance of the LGBTQ plus community as there is today. Gay people still could not openly serve in the military and there were no job or housing protections for LGBTQ plus individuals. That year, school teacher Bob Parlin came out as gay after a student approached him about wanting a safe space for gay and straight students to talk, Parlin started the first Gay Straight Alliance. In an interview with CBS News, he said, quote, We thought maybe two or three students might join us and we could talk. But 50 students showed up. We specifically chose a room that was far away in a distant part of the building so the students wouldn't feel so embarrassed, end quote. 
gay straight alliances now exist in more than 10,000 public schools nationwide. Now Parlin is set to retire from Newton South High School in Boston, the home to the first GSA, known now as the Gender and Sexualities Alliance. Queer News Tonight salutes Bob Parlin, and we thank him for helping so many LGBTQ plus youth have a safe place to deal with their struggles and find friends. But when I was in high school, our GSA was the theater department. So um, I just want to thank, personally thank Bob Parlin for what he did for, for, for the young kids. Thank you. This is real support of children and youth, and we do salute you and enjoy your retirement. How many people can say that what they started mm. as a just coming out statement is now in 10,000 mm. schools? There are 10,000 clubs across this country. What a w way to change the world. Legacy. What a legacy. I mean, thank you so much for the work that you've done. Um, I didn't have one in my school, but I wish I did. Thank you. All right. So LGBTQ. Q plus flash news. LGBTQ plus history asked Stuart Delery to serve as first gay White House counsel. In 2012, Stuart Delery was appointed acting associate attorney general, the Justice Department's number three position. With that appointment, he became the highest ranking LGBTQ plus person in that department's history. While in that role, he argued against President Clinton's Defense of Marriage Act that banned legal same-sex unions. After the landmark Obergefell versus Hodges case that overturned that law, he oversaw the implementation of the Supreme Court's decision. President Biden has appointed him as White House counsel, making him the first LGBTQ plus person to hold that position when he assumes the role next month. President Biden definitely is diversifying the, the entire <laughs> government, and I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Once again, we thank President Biden for continuing to elevate LGBTQ plus people during his presidency. Yeah, I think it's taken for granted because um, there's been so many firsts in this administration um, that we do need to continue to focus on these type of stories mm. and, and realize that th this could change. So yeah. let's enjoy mm. it. And I think to, to wrap that up, we saw that Obama did something similar by having the you know, White House office on HIV and AIDS mm -hmm. and that get dismantled, back to your point, Jeff, mm -hmm. how quickly things can disappear depending on who's mm -hmm. in office. Mm -hmm. So kudos to President Biden for making it the most diversified group by appointing the people he has to the Supreme Court or the person he's appointed. Um, so awesome. Okay, LGBTQ plus flash, flash news. Republican who wants to ban kids from drag shows hosted drag parties for her kids in her home. One Republican candidate for governor of Arizona, Carrie Lake, recently spoke out against drag queens posting on her Twitter and Instagram. Quote, they kicked God out of schools and welcomed the drag queens. They took down our flag and replaced it with a rainbow. They seek to disarm Americans and militarize our enemies. Let's bring back the basics. God, guns, and glory, end quote. The queen of Phoenix drag queens, Barbara Seville, used to be friends with Lake before she became a Republican and has brought receipts. Seville told the Arizona Republic, quote, she's friends with drag queens. She's had her kid in front of a drag queen. I've done drag in her home for her friends and family. She's not threatened by them. She would come to shows constantly to make me be the bo boogeyman for political gain. It was just too much, end quote. You know what? Good for that for Seville for coming out there and and crowning out the hypocrisy and this whole thing of it's all for political gain. I just love how the gays always have receipts. <laughs> Be careful, we will pull it up. Well, and that hypocrite Carrie Lake looks like an old butch who probably wore her hair in a dyke spike in the nineties. <laughs> I, I don't know. This candidate, she's just going to jump in a lake at this point because these hypocrites, they're all out there. So I'm glad that there's receipts too. <laughs> this is my favorite. Bring out the phone, bring out the purse, whatever you, wherever you kept the receipt, day. bring them out. <laughs> LGBTQ plus flash news. This is real flash. Holy pride, Batman. Watch 4 million attend San Paulo Pride Parade. Brazil is holding its presidential election this October, and the LGBTQ community is ready to vote homophobic Jair Bolsonaro out of office. 
San Paolo Pride, the world's largest pride, was held this weekend, and the theme was Vote with Pride. Yes! <laughs> Nearly 4 million LGBTQ plus people from all over Brazil and the world gathered in the city to celebrate. An openly gay Brazilian senator, Fabiano Contatardo, marched in the parade. Well, listen, this is what I've been preaching all night. I've been preaching it all the time. Just vote, and we don't have to worry about all of these attacks and all of these crazy people coming at us. So love this, love Brazil, love this Pride event. Amazing. 50, like I said, we have 55,000 people in our own little city, 4 million coming out in, in a country that's ruled by someone who actually mm. hates us. Mm. This is amazing. Mm. <laughs> we're here, we're queer, get used to it. We're going to show up, <laughs> and we're going to show out. <laughs> well, congrats to Sao Paulo on that 4 million, but I think I prefer the more manageable 55,000 at uh, Stonewall Pride. I don't think they're worried about security like we were. No, probably not. Oh, right. <laughs> that is today's news for the LGBTQ plus community on the world's first and only daily LGBTQ plus evening news show. Is our community important to you? Then help us by liking and subscribing. Ring the bell for updates. Share this news with your friends and family. Post this broadcast in the many groups you are a member of. Tonight's stories about our community deserve the attention of your family and friends. Queer News Tonight is the only live LGBTQ plus digital television show in the world that is out of the closet and into the headlines. We need your support. If our community is to grow, we must tell our stories and bring them to the attention of the broader world. This is the only place in the world that tells these LGBTQ plus stories in motion and sound. That is the passion of the Happening Out Television Network and Queer News Tonight. I'm your anchor, Glenn Weinzimmer, and on behalf of these fabulous LGBTQ plus reporters, the anchors of Queer News Tonight, including Christopher Barnhill, your very first show you did Welcome. amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate Greg it. Shapiro and Jeff Oliverio. We will see you daily at 8 p.m. Before we end our show, we have a special final story. Corrupt politics. Val Deming's first speech, Don't Be Afraid to to LGBTQ plus Florida um, at Stonewall Pride. The past weekend, Queer News Tonight was on hand to broadcast the Wooden Manor Stonewood Pride Parade live. Before the start of the parade, we were joined on stage by U.S. Representative Val Demings. She discussed her past as a police chief and how she will fight to protect our community. Watch this. And I wanna introduce you, not to Senator Marco Rubio, but potentially the person that is going to defeat Marco Rubio in the fall. I'm happy to introduce you to Congresswoman Val Demings. Welcome to Wilton Manors, Fort Lauderdale, Broward County. It is so good to be here to celebrate gay, 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 pride. Well, as everyone that is at Stonewall Pride, 40,000 here today, many coming to see you in terms of what we're going to do to change the U.S. Senate's representation in Florida. Tell us a little bit about for for all of us, our first introduction to you here uh, in Wilt Manors in Fort Lauderdale, tell us about what you want to do in the U.S. Senate. How do you want to represent Florida? Well, how I want to represent Florida, number one, is helping everybody, not just in our state, but in our nation, to understand that we are one. And as such, regardless of who you are, the color of your skin, how much money you have, where you were born, your sexual orientation, gender identity, or religion deserve to succeed in a country that we say is the greatest country in the world. We, we will be fighting every day to make sure we get the Equality Act passed in the Senate. Congressman Demings, uh, uh, Congresswoman Demings, uh, Demings, sorry. I, we're very concerned about how the GOP is painting the LGBTQ community. We have seen unprecedented attacks in 2022. I don't know if you know, but our governor and our U.S. Senator thinks 
that it is sexualizing our children when a drag queen does story hour and reads and that you can't say gay in our schools. What do you think about the trend that is happening in Florida that is leading the nation in this, this kind of hate culture war mentality we're watching? Well, that's why I think it is so important that we elect leaders who want to represent all people. We cannot tolerate, tolerate the foolishness that we are seeing coming out of the U.S. Senate, out of the GOP. We cannot tolerate the foolishness that we are seeing coming out of Tallahassee. We don't have to settle. We don't have to settle. If we get out and fight and fight and fight some more, we can make Florida a state that is truly inclusive of all people. Congresswoman Demi, uh, many people have said in the LGBTQ community that you're an interesting candidate for U.S. Senate because you're a woman, you're black, but you kind of have a trump card. The GOP can't paint you as being weak on crime. You're a police chief. Tell us a bit about those three kind of, it's kind of like a trifecta in this election for the U.S. Senate. I want to thank you so much for that question. I spent 27 years at the Orlando Police Department. I had the honor of serving as Orlando's 36th Chief of Police. And guess what? And the first woman to hold the position. Let me just say this and remind you. Defunding the police, that's just crazy. Of course, we support our men and women in blue or green. But the bottom line is this, everybody counts and everybody is accountable. No one, no one is above the law. Watch the January 6th hearing very, very closely and very carefully. Despite the foolishness, no, it was not just political discord. No, it was not just a normal tourist day. Everybody counts, but everybody is accountable, and no one is above the law. Congresswoman, uh, Demi, we really appreciate you being here in Wilton Manors and in Fort Lauderdale. My final question is for all of the LGBT that has come out for this parade. There's a lot of growing fear in our community, in the LGBTQ community. We're listening to hate-filled arguments and statements coming out of Tallahassee. We're watching it on Fox News. We're seeing it in radical evangelical churches. We're watching it in California just this week of Proud Boys storming a public library screaming in front of children because a drag queen is present. And just this week, we watched in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, when 31 radical white supremacists came from 12 states to riot at an event exactly like this, bro. There's a lot of fear, 40,000 people here. A very significant amount of money has been spent for just protection. What is your message running for U.S. Senate, being a congresswoman? What do you say to the LGBTQ community of the fear that they have growing in America? What I will say is this, and it's, it's awful to have to admit it, but the hate is real. The efforts to divide us, they're real. But the bottom line is this. Whether you are on the GOP side or on the Democratic side or an independent, 
Our primary responsibility as elected officials is the health, safety, and well-being, not just of the privileged few, but the health, safety, and well-being of all people. And I would tell you, don't just listen to what they say. Watch what they do. I have dedicated my life to public service. I have dedicated my life to the health, safety, and well-being of all people. And when I get to the United States Senate, I am going to fight for you, for you, and for you. I, I said that was going to be the last question, but I have one more. The parade is getting ready to start, and we've got to whisk her off to the beginning of this parade. I heard conversation. You're walking today, correct? Yeah. So when you see, and to our national audience that is going is watching us in Roku and Apple Television, make sure you watch the moment uh, when Congresswoman Denning gets here. But I understood that you could have ridden your Harley motorcycle. Is that true? That's true. That's true. Let, let me tell you all something. I ride a 2004 Harley Davidson Road King Classic. And guess where we rode our bikes yesterday, our motorcycles? We rode had the audacity to ride into the villages. <laughs> Well, our choice, we know, is clear. What would you recommend we do? How do we help you? How do we make the control of the Senate stay the way we want to do? What's your last message? Let me message? say this. I hear you. I hear you. And I also see you. I see you. The Pulse nightclub is in my district. We just took the time, yet again, to remember the 49 people who lost their lives. I need you to join my campaign. I need you to tell somebody about my campaign. We have outraised that other guy every quarter that we have been in this race. We can win. We can win this race. But I want you to know if I win, you win. Let's get this done with your help, I will be elected the next senator to represent the great state of Florida. Marco, Marco Rubio is watching right now. Say her name. Congresswoman Val Demi. Thank you very much. Well, give another round of applause to the incredible Miss Val Deming, ladies and gentlemen. LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ.